So, what does the term one heart, one way mean to you? I think for me, when I first came to Starbridge, it really showed like the inclusivity of everything. Um, I never felt any like separation between the men's team and the women's team. And even like having the youth teams come in to watch our games, I think it like really showed that everyone's together as one. I think that's what it meant for me. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And living locally as well, because I only live around the corner and I see all like the fans and that on a day to day basis. I see how much it means to them. So I, I'd include the fans and like people behind the scenes as well into that as well. Like it's quite a community club, isn't it? Yeah, when I was when I was brought in and they said to me, we're all together, like the fans come in, the girls come and watch, it's yeah. all everyone's the same and they're all equal, so it brings us all together and like well, views are the same really. One heart. One way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think collectively um, everybody knows each other. Like we've made sure as a, we are one family. Like the the males, they get to well, they get to know the males. The men's team get to know the the female side, and the female side get to know the reserves. And the reserves, we get ourselves involved with the youth. So you've got the under 14s that are all aware mm. of the the older section as well. Yeah. We're quite fortunate important. that we work with like the academies, and the, mm. so we see what all the the youngsters coming through and that as well. Yeah, and we have the obviously younger players come up and train with us. So yeah, so, it just yeah. keeps us all knitting together. So for us, yeah. bringing yeah. the under 18 team that we do on Tuesdays, they like, come and join the reserve session, who then can go up to the first team sessions on Tuesdays. And I like you said, like behind the scenes, the fact that like Bully and Tartney are sat in the, yeah. they can go have a drink and sit down with them and it doesn't even feel like. Yeah, I'm half turn away for you, but. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the only reason why they're there. It kind of feels like there's not a hierarchy, doesn't it? It feels like you are one family. Yeah. It's yeah. Not, they're the chairman. It's we just yeah, one big group. We are all in it together. Yeah. What's the best example you've seen at teamwork at Starbridge? I'd say um, this year we played Royce and I, didn't we? And we was losing three yeah. one. And my and we, we took us a lot to get back in it because we was going through a bad patch in the season. We wasn't. We didn't start good. And I think that's where a turning point for us, where we come from behind. We didn't we normally just fold, and we all stuck together. Defenders chipped in, got a goal. The striker scored a goal, and midfielder scored a goal. Mm -hmm. So it was like we all jumped in at the same, and it was nice to get a, a, a draw after going beyond. We normally we just fold and like let it go under the under the bridge. That's sort of my best example of this season of teamwork for me. I would agree. Yeah. I feel like mine's a bit more generic because. I joined Starbridge when we were in tier six, it was like three, four years ago. Um, so it's not necessarily like one set day, but seeing kind of especially our management and you know, Bully and Pantley, like them as a team, developing like the women's section and like the women's side of the club to get to a point where it's at now where we've got um, you know, both our first team and our reserves team playing in National League. Um, academy setups for both like the boys and the girls and then the youth section that's like absolutely thriving. I think the best example that I've seen of teamwork at Starbridge for me isn't necessarily like on the pitch, it's yeah. off the pitch and like behind the scenes and things. Um, like even including Jason, that like how the club has kind of become like a central home for players where everyone feels comfortable. Yeah. I think that teamwork for me is like so important because it yeah. makes you just feel like together. Not just the players. Like. Yeah. I, think I can remember an example for the girls. I remember being at, was it Leafield when you went to extra time? Oh yeah. And then you scored like a late late goal, didn't you? And then you had Cal like knee sliding like on the pitch. So he like ran on the pitch slide, knee slide Kieran and that as well. And I just feel like that them little things together. Yeah, yeah. I think I think following on that with Leafield, like we made a point of even when our game had ended to make sure we heard it was extra time. We're making those reserves, we've you got to the game yeah, as quick as we possibly could to be a part of the fact that you went and beat them within the last few minutes. Yeah, it was like and we were a part of the celebrations then mm. because that's what we are, we're just one team really. Yeah, yeah, the first and the reserves, team, yeah. we, we are a, we are one side, that's how it feels, side for the men. It's quite a tight knitted group in aspect with yeah. all the teams, like all yeah. of us are together really, and we were like we all talk to each other, we talk to the youngers, we talk to the girls, and everyone's together, so we're all one big team, even with like the staff behind the bar, we, we just talk to them normal, don't we? Like, yeah. they're, still sitting, they're not even yeah. behind the bar, are they? They sit out and have a, <laughs> no, have a drink with us. I'm not having a bar more than there sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go then, so we'll serve ourselves, but we always, have to, we always have to pay, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Thoughts about being a role model to the next generation? Um, for me, obviously, I'd like to consider myself a role model at this point because uh, I've took myself into the, the coaching side of things, so taking over the under-14s and being able to develop them as players and 
bringing them up to what potentially will be the next generation. It's going to be the part of they're going to they can come into the reserves and and they can join into the first. But it's a case of you can show them the section already. Yeah, I'd second that. Uh, like being one of the older players in the team as well. Apparently, according to how I do it, it's like colder now. Yeah, no, I'd say like just sharing my experiences with like from being a pro as well and being full time, just trying to share them experiences and them standards that I set to like the younger lads as well. That's how I try and be a role model. Yeah, same thing. Like I've played at the high highest levels and come back down and when they will bring some of his team his players from the youth teams and the college team and they'll ask me like questions on positioning shooting and i feel like that makes me feel like i'm being kind of a role model to them so it makes me feel a bit like like i've actually done something for them to ask me questions like that when i'm still only like 27 compared to some of the players that are <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it is I do, my, I do feel like a role model sometimes, yeah. I feel like mine's, again, like a completely different standpoint because like women's football is still growing so much. It, I still think it's like really important to kind of be that kind of advocate for women's football to like everyone, which sounds like really yeah. stupid. But obviously I work in a school as well, so kind of getting the younger generations of like boys and girls both involved in women's football because Obviously, the, the older generations for so long have just kind of turned a blind eye to it, um, and you can understand why. But now I feel like it's really trying to like pull it along and really like get those like younger kids involved. Um, and like I've got a, a girl at school, and it's superhero day tomorrow, and she's dressed up as me, and she's wearing oh. a football kit, <laughs> and she's got a little Lego land lanyard, and she's drawn a picture of me. And like that to me is just like. Should have got a sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I should have done like a big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. um, but no, like that to me just kind of like shows how much. Not only like kind of myself, even though I don't I don't play football at school, but like she knows that yeah. I yeah. play for a team, and you know, um, Stanford give them raffle tickets to the school for um, them for the kids to watch both the men and the women, mm -hmm. and even though it's one school, they'll tell their friends, and it's just so important to get that message out to to the local communities because I feel like that's what non-league football runs off. Yeah, definitely. Um, and we've got a lot of young like, teams, haven't we? All yeah, the, yeah. Like, a, lot, a lot of teams and it's like established players and we're all the same. We're really not like, all of, each player's the same, we're all equal to just what we all want to need to be group, haven't we? Yeah. We're right, like we're role models like involved in the in the local well, not the local teams, in the sections like boys and girls sections. Mm -hmm. But also I think Sometimes we forget that we're role models for local football as well. Like whether they support Stabbage or not, we we're who they look to as their immediate role models in football. So you see these Premier League like players, and they're so kind of out of touch with everything else. Whereas yeah. we're like really normal people. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got jobs, we've got kind of other things to be doing, but it just shows like the heart and passion that we have to be kind of setting that standard. And I just think that's so important and kind of. That's a commendable. Sounds like Tom. <laughs> but like, yeah, I think sometimes we forget about. Right. Discuss the importance of inclusion and how welcoming Stella are to all walks of life. You starting off? <laughs> no, it's like, um, we struggled on this one, didn't we? Yeah, we could. Yeah, what was it again? Can I see it? Yeah. Discuss the importance of inclusion. Feels terrible. Um, I do feel like we've kind of covered it a bit in like the one heart one way yeah, yeah. Um, and how like everyone like yeah is one management bar staff yeah. but I suppose even Bert in the bar man like Bert man like Bert <laughs> man like yeah like we were talking earlier and everyone's got a different walk in life we've all got different mm -hmm. stories we've all got different life yeah. experiences we've all done ways. different things we've all got different paths and like when you come through the doors at Starbridge everyone's the same everyone's Everyone's treated exactly the same. We talk to each other, like we just go and we interact with everyone. Like it doesn't matter who you are, you could be someone that we don't we've never seen before, and if they talk to you, we just have a chat with them. So that's what I think. Like where that is, you know. Mm. I think it's rare to find a club like that we are that we are so integrated as a whole, yeah. complete section, male, uh, the men's and the female section. We <laughs> We are just, we are one group. Everybody knows everybody. It's rare to find in any other club. Mm -hmm. 
That'd be brilliant. I don't think I've ever been at a club which, which is like this, to be honest, where all the team is so together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can find groups that can be quite separate, can't yeah. you? Yeah. It's, it's... It normally does go that way, don't it? It normally does yeah. go that way. No, right? it's... It's... You can see why. Like, you can, yeah, yeah, of but course, but... I think it's you've got nice you guys that come to support the, the games here and yeah. vice versa. They're was, always coming to, to that. make that conscious effort to come and watch you guys. It's the yeah. same. It's, yeah. it's nice when you look over there. and you see like the girls team like watching the first team and yeah. that. And the young girls and those yeah, old yeah. Yeah. Those young kids. Like I was saying, like coaching the under 14s, they're really keen to come and watch your games yeah. and then they yeah. make the effort to, to watch you guys as well. Yeah. It's like those life lessons as well, really, isn't it? Like for those younger kids, like yeah. showing the inclusion and it's like such a typical, but it's like such a safe space for everyone i feel mm -hmm. like definitely and for, for those younger kids to be surrounded by such like a safe inclusive environment it i think it sets them up really well to kind of develop accepting individuals yeah. who are also sick of football yeah <laughs> <laughs> i just think it makes like the young kids days you know like when they're waiting at the tunnel for us and they all want to slap our hands oh, and stuff you yeah. see their faces yeah. after you go over to them and do it or talk to them or whatever they feel they can do that though yeah, like, the club oh, that we are he's, he's just done that i don't they're, get that they mm. feel they're in a safe place to go and do that. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, the under fourteens are happy to come and put their hands ready all before when they're all walking out. Yeah, it is. It's nice.